Welcome to the Land Your Bet Sports Betting Show. Late night here on Friday night, getting ahead of this Saturday slate with you. Eight games that we have on the docket to choose from. I took a close look at four of them and have a few early bets that I'm already making. Want to get ahead of this stuff with you guys. Make sure to subscribe to that page. Also going to be going live tomorrow, as always, with a live stream on Saturday tomorrow. We're going to be doing this one at 2 p.m. Eastern, so morning time out on the West Coast. Get ahead of the games that start. One of those games starts really early. We'll be taking a look at that one right now with the Knicks and the Nets taking off uh, at about 10 a.m. on the West Coast. 1 p.m. tip out there on the East Coast, so we'll get uh, ahead of that right now and might have a couple bets more bets on that one at the live stream tomorrow so do make sure to subscribe to that page and keep coming back let's get into exactly what i've got here for that knicks and nets game to kick things off we are looking at a seven and a half point spread 204 and a half on the total they're really low total between these two teams who have gone very low in their totals as they uh, the games that they played against each other as of late uh, for the nets everybody's pretty much healthy in that one obviously a couple guys that have been out for the season like ben simmons not playing but for the knicks og and anobi the main name to look at who is still out and julius randall and mitchell robinson remain out as well hopefully getting those guys back before the playoffs for knicks fans but we'll see what happens there let's take a look at the last five games for both these teams offensive rating for the knicks has gotten a little bit better after jalen brunson came back he missed a few games so they're actually much worse 10 games in a 10 game sample size but in the last five they are back up to 16th in offensive rating the uh the nets there not looking as good 26th the defensive rating for the knicks back to being the best team in the league on defense We'll see what happens without OG moving forward. But against this Nets team, who is a, a huge jump shooting team, not really worried about their ability to limit points to the Nets. The defensive rating for the Nets, not as good, 23rd. The pace for both this teams uh, really going to be very slow in this one. And the rebound percentage should go a huge edge to the Knicks, as well as the effective field goal percentage on offense for the Knicks been a lot better, like I said, over the last five, as opposed to dead last for this Nets team who has been terrible uh, from the field. And that's a big reason for why they've been so terrible in general, losing a lot of these games as of late. Uh, if we look at the offense for Brooklyn specifically and take a closer look at it, not looking great uh, as we do see them at, go into the rim a good amount, but that rim field goal percentage, not very good. The Knicks are not even allowing teams to get to the rim very often, but when they do limiting them to the 10th worst field goal percentage as in 10th best for the defensive field goal percentage here, the mid range frequency and mid range field goal percentage are worrisome. If you're a, Nets fan because you need to be making your jump shots as this is a jump shooting team pretty much only and you can see right there not very good from the mid range or above the break where they are shooting the 12th most shots over the last five but have the fifth worst field goal percentage from above the break Knicks, we know that they're going to be awesome against and defense pretty much everywhere uh, and that if that field goal percentage remains high for them on defense or that rebound percentage rather remains high for them uh, on defense then they should be able to limit this uh, Nets team and the amount of shots that they even get Looking at the Knicks offense, they have been uh, pretty good in terms of getting their offensive rebounds. Six best offensive rebound percentage. That's going to be probably a huge advantage that they have over this Nets team, who is uh, sixth worst in limiting their opponent offensive rebound percentage in the last five games. The second chance points haven't been quite as high for the Knicks, so they aren't finishing necessarily. They also have a, a much lower uh, pace, right? So they're not playing as many possessions in each of these games, which is a big reason why even though their offensive rebound percentage is high, there's not enough possessions for them to actually have that many second chance points off of those offensive rebounds, although they're still getting a decent amount. The the uh, Nets are fourth worst, right, in terms of limiting second chance points. So if the Knicks do get those offensive rebounds, it's likely that they're going to be able to put them back. They're going to the paint very often. Nets have gotten better at defending the paint, uh, especially with Nick Claxton a little bit healthier, and they got Dayron Sharp back. So they've actually, uh, although teams have been going at them at the highest frequency to the uh, into the paint. They are limiting them to the third worst field goal percentage, still giving up a decent amount of points in that area, though, because of the fact that they are getting attacked at the rim so often, right? Looking at how often you get the Knicks in transition, not that bad, actually. 15th most on the season right now, and they are pretty effective when they get their 11th best transition points per possession. The Nets have not been getting back on defense very well. They're not getting put into the transition very often on defense, but when they do bottom 11, their 11th worst, basically, field goal percentage uh, points per possession for their opponent. So two leans that I have, and I actually did hit this over uh, 204 and a half for the Knicks uh, and the Nets in the total. I also do like the Knicks to be able to handle things at 207 and a half. That's also why I don't mind taking them with such a big spread is because if we go over 204 and a half here, it's a little bit easier uh, to predict an eight point differential in the score at the end of the game, right? And if we go under and we need the Knicks to cover and go under, that'd be a little bit more difficult. So I, I do like this to get up to about 210 in this game. I do think the Knicks can also cover the seven and a half, but the the, the uh, stronger bet is going to be on 204 and a half. 
I also have a player prop in this one. Looking at JB, actually taking an under on his assists in this one. Minus 123 on Caesar for a full unit. That might even drop down to five and a half uh, by the morning time. This is just a, a classic case of, of Brooklyn not double teaming the really good above the break point guard on the other team, which is something that they've done all season. That they, It might give up the points to JB. I think he's at about 28, 29 and a half in this one. Uh, and he is likely to go over in a game where they, they really want to win this one and keep that, that four seed that they have uh, and maintain that right moving forward. And I do think that with uh, the way that this Brooklyn team plays defense, they don't double team. Uh, they're very good defending the pick and roll man on the other team in terms of like top four limiting points per possession to the roll guy, meaning when Jalen Brunson gets into that pick and roll with his probably Isaiah Hartenstein, we'll probably see some Isaiah uh, up soon. Uh, uh, Precious Achua in this one as well. It does look like the uh, the, the the Nets are going to sort of play that drop defense, lay off of uh, Jalen Brunson and not double team him. And that's why they'll be giving up a bit more points to him if he's able to make his shots in that situation, but not necessarily the assist to the roll guy or the spot up shooters where they're also really good at limiting points per possession in that sense as well. Uh, I believe they're uh, tops in the league, the top three anyway, in terms of limiting points to the roll, uh, to the spot up shooters as well. So anybody that he might be looking to pass to off of that pick and roll Role play that he's going to be running a lot not going to be quite as open against his team he'll be forced to shoot a lot more that, but at the same time there just won't be as many assists so he's got to hit those shots to get the points but i do think that the assists and the potential assists as they haven't been very high for him in general only at about 10 potential assists over his last six games right that's uh and his last six versus brooklyn specifically which is why he's only gone over this number once in his last six games versus brooklyn so it's a pretty good matchup here for him to not get his assists in this one next game on the slate not exactly one for uh the casuals you're gonna have to want to be a sicko basketball fan to put to put any time watching this game to Tomorrow, especially with all the uh, March Madness action, this is not going to be high on the priority list to watch. But we do have the Hornets and the, the uh, Hawks here in Atlanta, and I do have a bet for this one. And it's a little bit predicated on what we see here in the uh, injury report. The Hornets, LaMelo still out, Mark Williams still out, Seth Curry still out. For the Hawks, everybody also still out. Except for Anyeka Okongwu, who we did see play in these last two games, he's doubtful to play here on Saturday. So quick look at the last five for these two teams. Uh, this is just the last five games. Offensive rating, obviously going to be an edge to the Hawks. Defensive rating, actually a bit of, a, of an edge to the uh, Hornets here. And then as far as the pace goes, both of them playing, playing pretty slowly. Don't think we'll see very, very many points in this game. 215 and a half. Would actually lean a little bit more to the under than I would over. But it's a weird Saturday game. So I'm, I'm staying away from the total on this one. The rebound percentage, definitely going to be a slight edge to the Hawks. Not that they've been great, but this Hornets team has been one of the worst rebounding teams all season. God bless Nick Richards trying to do it himself down there uh, and then if you look at the opponent effective field goal percentage for the um, the Hawks here 21st as well there but th they don't have much to worry about with this Hornets team fourth worst uh, effective field goal, goal percentage for them on offense and they've been a little bit better on defense with the 12th best as opposed to the offensive uh, effective field goal percentage for this Hawks team where they're at third worst not shooting the ball very well at all gonna need to get some buckets close to the rim which is why I have Clint Capella as my best bet for this game and, and one of my, my bets of the night here I'm going with a total of one and a half units on this dude because you see in the points and rebounds 23 and a half we get minus 117 on our money for him to hit that with a full unit but then i do want to take a half a unit and put it on just the rebounds because we get such a good number here in terms of 11 and a half it's pretty close to what i have i mean i think 13 is a good rebounding expectation for him in this one 14 would be a pretty nice game for him but if you if you still like the even money here for half a unit it's worth it uh at first we could see this even go up to be honest with okongu listed as doubtful and he probably won't be back and he's a huge reason for the fact that uh capella has gone under in his last two games on the, for these numbers right here for both rebounds and points and rebounds over the last two because of the fact that Okongu came in, took some some minutes from him, uh, and especially the rebound chances. 16 rebound chances in the last two games for Clint when he had Okongu in there. You look at the previous eight games without Okongu, 19 and a half rebound chances, so three and a half more chances there, likely to, to get him that the, the couple more rebounds that he needed to get over in these last two games. And Charlotte, we know how bad they are against centers and everything that Clint Capella wants to do. They give up the second most rebounds per game to the position and the third most points per game as well to centers on the season over the last seven however you want to look at it quick reminder as we jump into the kings visiting the magic here that we do have the live stream 2 p.m eastern we're going to be bringing those bets to the uh to the stream here jump in the comments with those we go over those together been having a good time riding with you guys on that stuff but let's keep it moving here with the magic minus four and a half that has got bet up a little bit it was three and a half to open the total was at 220 and a half that got bet down to 215 and a half where it sits right now 
as I am recording on Friday night for you guys. No real injuries. I mean, Huerta is still going to be out. Red Velvet for the Kings. Trey Lyles also been out for a while. And then Gary Harris is questionable to play in this one. A lot of guard depth right now for the Magic, though, who have been looking pretty good with the uh, Markel Fultz, Cole Anthony, and Jalen Suggs looking really good as well. So the, uh, the Magic and Kings here looking at the last five for these teams. Eighth in offensive rating for the Magic. 19th for the Kings, but they've played some decent defensive teams and they're pretty hard strength of schedule. Their D rating has been first in the league over the last five. Also a little bit of inflation there as opposed to the deflation and the O rating, but pretty impressive showing for them at least to play D more so on the road, which is where they've been playing and they are much better on the road on defense and much worse on offense. So it kind of adds up that they've been a better home team uh, and a faster home team as well as they're only in the 13th pace in the last uh, in the last five. You've got the Magic playing at about where they normally do, 96 pace, 95 on the season, 20th, uh, and in terms of the fast... Uh, the 11th slowest let's put it that way the rebound percentage has been good for both these teams as we've seen the kings get really uh improve their defensive rebound percentage magic are always going to be in that top 10 and then as far as the effective field goal percentage magic have been uh really good defensively as we know kings not shooting the ball very well at all they are missing where a little bit in that sense uh, and then as far as on d they've only been given up the third uh, the third lowest basically defect a defensive effective field goal percentage for the magic here third best on the season on offense so they've been uh, in the last five anyway they've been pretty hot in their with their shooting i will say that for the magic who had some woes at first uh prior to this they've been streaky as far as that goes but we look at the sack offense a little bit more deeply they're uh, places that they might be able to get points against this magic team would have said the the second chance points uh, off the offensive rebounds but we know the magic are really good at limiting that uh maybe the turnover percentage that's going to be a problem for them as well i actually look at this as a, an advantage for the magic because they've been fourth best in their opponent turnover percentage turning those into points off of turnovers this kings have been getting back and at least limiting those points off of the turnovers that they've been giving up uh ninth fewest that they've given up in terms of the points there but they have been giving up a lot of turnovers which has at least led to a part of the reason that their offense have been has been so ineffective um and then as far as the free throw attempts they have been getting to the line a ton attacking the basket a lot of uh points and uh, transition frequency is really high for them as well but the magic have been getting back on defense limiting the free throws to the other team as you can see there so not necessarily like there's going to be an advantage for the kings it kind of makes sense that the the magic would be getting bet upon at home as well problem is if you look at their offense it has been prone to turnovers as well and the kings have been getting uh the third most turnovers in the last five games really the th forcing the third the third highest uh, turnover percentage to their from their opponent turning those into points off of turnovers but like the kings the magic have been getting back on d after they turn the ball over not giving up too many points off of those turnovers they are getting to the free throw line and both these teams could spend a good amount of time at the free throw line in this one as, as you can see the uh the free throw attempt rate for the magic remains high but uh and the, the kings are continuing to foul a ton right so that would indicate that you're going to see guys like paolo even franz get to the free throw line a good amount as would would be the case for guys like deer and fox and, and Dom, domas Sabonis, who also have been getting to the free throw line and the magic have been fouling a ton but not really much of an advantage at the rim for either team or in terms of transition either so it's really just going to be like who kind of turns it over the least but my lean in this game is can this game get down to 213 and a half and if it gets down that low then i would bet this over at 213 and a half i would say that's a way big overcorrection. i think this game's probably safe at around 218 as a total maybe 217 so not much of an edge if you're playing this at 215 and a half but if this does get down a couple more points now i think you've got a decent enough edge to bet an over in this one and feel pretty good about it all right last thing we have here for the night at least until we get into that live stream at 2 p.m eastern time tomorrow is the trailblazers at the nuggets and what immediately made me jump on this game was that i was watching friday night hoop and anthony simons went down and as soon as he went down and i saw that the nuggets injury report held nicola and jamal murray on it i was thinking to myself why would the Nuggets play anybody in this game? They're going to play one of the worst teams in the league, probably the worst team in the West, and they're going to be playing them without a bunch of guys, and probably Anthony Simons not coming back in this one. He did not return to the game against the Clippers that they took a beating on on Friday night. Second leg of the back-to-back. -back. Maybe they play a few other guys like DeAndre Ayton. Well, I think the Nuggets are really just basically waiting to see what's happening with this Trailblazers uh, lineup and injury report. And if the Trailblazers are going to be sitting the same guys that were out on Friday in this one, then Nicole and Jamal Murray have no reason to play. Uh, I, I mean, even if they do play and, and you see could because they see DeAndre Ayton and or Jeremy Grant come back into this game uh, as opposed to missing it on Friday like they did, 
why would they play very long at all? I mean, this game should be 20 points in favor of the Nuggets at halftime, in which case they don't really need Jamal or Nicole in the second half. So if even if one or both of the Nuggets players do step on the floor in this game, I still can't see them playing 30 minutes, which means that the real reason I'm even telling you about this is because I would start looking at what you can get in terms of the backups here for the Trailblazers. Probably going to be some Scoot Henderson points and assists if they stay at about 14 and a half points, maybe 15 and a half, and you see it about six and a half assists. That's where I'd, I'd feel like you're getting some pretty good value for this uh, Trailblazers bet here on Scoot Henderson. For the Nuggets, keep an eye out for Reggie Jackson and Christian Brown, maybe even DeAndre Jordan. If there is a full sit from uh, Nikola Jokic, we've seen Zeke Naji be hurt over the last couple games. So there is the likelihood that they would call on the, the vet there in terms of DeAndre Jordan. Maybe he and uh, our Jacks can turn back the clock like they did in that last game where they played the Clippers this season without Jamal Murray or Nikola Jokic. Aaron Gordon, obviously going to be a good look as well because he is going to be sort of the adult in the room. So we'll be, have a little bit more on, of that on the live stream tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. Hopefully we have a little bit more of the uh, the injury report stuff and clarity out there so that we can get into that stuff. But that is all the time that I have for you guys in this one. Definitely make sure to subscribe to that page. Going to be coming out with these videos for you until we are done with hoops this season. Uh, trying to get them the night before when I can. Had some, had some time to get a look in, at these games. Got a few player props up early as well tonight that was able to jump on. So definitely want to make Make sure you get the value of those because I cannot guarantee that they're there the next day by the time that you do watch this video. Uh, so make sure that you are subscribed and get those notifications on. We're going to be coming back with that live stream tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern. Definitely want to jump in there in the comments. Bring those bets. We go over them together. Had a pretty good night on Friday. Uh, still came out on top, but I'll be going through the full record on Saturday after we have all these games done. So appreciate y'all. And until I see you next, happy betting.